Welcome to another episode of this old hoopty where I take this piece of crap and make it into something a little more pretty, I hope. <laughs> As promised, we're gonna work on the OBS pickup. We're gonna do a power emergency brake or a power parking brake. Let's get started. I wanna be able to mount a switch in here like we talked about, and it'll control a linear actuator, which will handle my parking brake. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna electrify it. Let's get into the video. Okay, if you guys remember where we left off last time, the uh, frame in the back needs to be painted and the uh, air suspension components need to be put on it. Uh, we're not going to be working on that today, but I am going to be putting this in the bed and removing it, getting it up on some stands, so I have easier access to the entire underside of the truck. Uh, we're going to be working on the electrical parking brake, as we talked about. So to get that started, let me get the bed over here and on stands, and I'll click you guys back on in a minute. Now that we got the bed secure on stands, let's take a look at what we're working with. As you remember, a little bit of surface rust, these uh, stupid shims since my uh, frame is all wonky. This was in an accident before I bought it. Here's our parking brakes here going to the rear tires. My plan is to uh, jump in somewhere underneath the rocker panel here and hook a linear actuator up. So as you guys can see, the emergency brake is all frayed and damaged over here anyways. So what I'm gonna do is somewhere along this point here, which is the junction where the two brakes from the back become one, I'm gonna jump in line here and I'm going to uh, mount a linear actuator over here. So I'm gonna get some more light so you guys can see better, but that's the basic pretense of what we're doing here. Before I jump onto the truck, Yes, I'm still working on the uh, S10 in the background. And yes, I have already rebuilt the transmission, new wiring harness, new um, shift solenoids, etc. So more on that when we get back to the S10. So I haven't forgot about you guys. But for now, we're working on the electric parking brake. And these are the parts we're going to be working with. I have a 4-inch linear actuator and a 2-inch linear actuator. I've got some crimps. My initial plan is going to be to crimp to the existing cable that's underneath there. I've got an assortment of sizes here. I've got something to cut the cable with, something to crimp the cable with. I'm going to use a uh, double pole, double throw switch mounted somewhere under the dash. So if I push this side, it goes one way. If I push this side, it goes the other way. And if it's left like this, it's off. And we're going to be using 12 gauge. I have 10 feet of the red, 10 feet of the black. That should be enough to get me where I'm going. All right, guys, you know how this works. The links for all this stuff will be in the description down below. So if you're doing the same thing I am with the same parts as I am, they will work the same way. If you're using something different, pay attention to your wiring on your switches and the voltage and amperage of your linear actuator and your cables. Let's get onto the truck and start cutting cables and see where I can mount this uh, linear actuator to do what I need it to do. Let's go. Let's start off with each one of the rear wheels has a manual brake right here. This one here is for the passenger side. This one here is for the driver's side. They join up over here. Obviously these zip ties aren't supposed to be here. Fix that after the fact. 
and they become one over here. There's like a joint that merges them together. My plan is to mount the linear actuator somewhere along there and uh, hook up that parking brake cable to the end there. Theoretically, we should be able to pull on this cable. Um, this linear actuator here has up to 200 pounds of pulling force. That should be more than enough to uh, pull this cable forward. Once I have enough force pulled on this cable, the parking brake will be on for the back two wheels. So it looks like the holes that come on the uh, actuator bracket are 5 16 So we're gonna use 5 16 nut and bolt. Let's get this mocked up with some holes in the frame. I made use of the bolt that's holding in the fuel filter. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to replace this bolt with one that is about half inch or three quarter inch longer. And then I'll put a nut on this side, which will allow me to mount my bracket here. And then I just drill the second hole right next to it. I'll put this thing right here, which will, that'll allow me to mount it right here, which as you can see is just at the line. I mean, if you're under the car, you're obviously you're gonna see it. But uh, if you're standing up, you're not going to see this thing. For testing purposes, I'm gonna use all the hardware that came with it uh, just to get everything mocked up. But uh, when this thing goes live, I'm gonna replace this with a grade eight nut and bolt. I think that'll be a lot safer because I don't trust this piece. It's not very well made. So you guys get the idea of how this is gonna work. Basically, this is gonna come through here, something like that, and then so it'll kind of cinch on like that i'm gonna to have to cut this shorter obviously first things first i'm gonna to have to get the actuator extended out to here and then that way i hook this on that way i know the exact distance so this can actually pull but uh this is looking pretty good i'll get this wire run right up through here right up into the cab All right, let me get some testing going for distance and I'll click you guys back on when I have this thing connected. For, uh, for now, you get the idea of how this works. I'm using the existing bolt from the um, fuel filter. I drilled a hole right next to it, added a 5 16 nut and bolt. This thing is sturdy. Uh, like I said, I don't trust these pins here. I'm gonna replace them with grade eight bolts because they'll be a lot stronger. And uh, now I just need to find a way to hook this up once I get this arm extended. Okay, so this is fully extended. So we need to get this short enough. So fully extended, we need to get this short enough to wrap around here like so. So the way I'm gonna do it, so it, the way I'm gonna do it so it pulls in a straight line is I'm actually going to have the linear actuator pulling on the bracket and then I'm looping the cable through a little eyelet here like this and then I'm going to crimp the end here, so that way it pulls like this. The crimp pieces I bought fit exactly around the metal cable, so I need to cut off all of this um, plastic sheathing. Let me find the best way to do that, because I need to get it back all the way to like here. a little bit off at a time all right boys so the easy way to do this without uh hopefully blowing ourselves up or uh, damaging anything is to add a little fire we're going to heat up the uh, sheathing and then we're going to slide it off let's do it Keep in mind, we're working very close to the gas tank. All right. 
Here we go. All right, that was good. And we didn't blow ourselves up as you see. Now we can take this little crimp piece here. And now that it's all the way on, we'll be able to hook in the other piece here once we get it bent up. All right, let's get a nice bend in the cable where we need it to be. All right, now we're gonna loop our cable through the little guide. It's kind of like hooking up a hammock. I think this will be easier disconnected. There we go. All right, let's get this on the loop. Jeez, that is not easy. All right, so the two parking brakes become one here. Then they loop around this little bracket connecting to the actuator. Now let's give it a test. All right, so we're gonna reverse the polarity so we can pull it in. There we go. All right, let me get this thing into neutral. But for right now, I can tell you that this wheel is not moving anymore. Let's pop it into neutral and see what happens. Now, obviously right now you can see that wire, but when I'm done, you can see that everything is above the line from visual and that's standing at the height of the truck. Let's get her into neutral. As you can see, we're in neutral. Yep. 
Yes, I've got chocks under my front wheels. Truck isn't going anywhere. All right, let's see if we can move these things. Nope. All right, now that we've got an electronic parking brake working, locking the rear wheels, let's work on the wiring, getting it up and in here under the dash so we can get a switch. Hopefully you guys can see in here, it's dark. I know it's a little bit dark in here, but much better. Okay, for those of you who've been around for a while, you remember we planned on putting some switches in the uh, cigarette lighter. This is one of them. So I have the um, USB 3 charging port in the place of the uh, cigarette lighter. I don't smoke, so I Let's don't need that. Let's get some wires ran up through here so I can get a switch to control that actuator. Oh, since it's a parking brake, I might as well run it right back out the parking brake hole. All right, give me a few minutes to get that hole worked out. And we're gonna run our wires behind the carpet, down the hole, and out to the linear actuator. All right, as you can see, not a ton of space in here, but I've ran this back down the hole where the cable was in for the parking brake. Now we're gonna run this up under the dash and pull it out over here where the uh, ashtray used to be. And of course, underneath the truck, we're gonna take the part that's under here and we're gonna hook it to the linear actuator. And we're going to zip tie it up along the underside of the floor plan. As you can see we're losing light and the bugs are starting to come out so i will be back tomorrow morning and we'll get the wiring in here finished up and show you the finished product see you in the morning all right guys good morning we are back at it again we've got our wires ran up to here do not forget to put in your rubber grommets i forgot to put those in but i'm doing them off camera so there are rubber grommets where i ran the wire through the floorboards all right as you can see behind me i've also got some uh, help today i've got my partner in crime my little maya she's going to be helping out with the uh, wiring today make sure everything is lit up and she'll probably do a little bit of filming so uh let's have some fun yeah yeah and i'm also going to be doing the lights to light up it Light it up. You heard the girl. She's going to be doing the lights to light up the bit. Let's go. You got the lights, baby girl? Yeah. All right, let's do this. Wiring the double pole, double throw switch to the linear actuator is pretty simple. Your two center prongs on the switch are going to be your positive and your negative. The outer four prongs, one side is going to be positive and negative going to the um, linear actuator. The other side jumps off of those two and all you're doing is you're reversing the polarity so as you can see here i've got them switched from this side to this side so this here is going to go to the other side over here and this one over here goes to this side here what that does is when i push this it reverses the polarity so it's taking the power from here and shoving it through this side for right now the switch is just going to sit inside the ashtray i'm going to have to 3d print a new ashtray that'll give me uh, the ability to mount more than one switch in there um, obviously these switches obviously these switches are a little large I'm gonna see if I can get one half the size of this with the same rating so that way I can put three switches across the inside of that it'll make more sense when I do it but for now I'm wiring this up so I can do it out of the truck so I can show it to you on video but I'm gonna fix it after the fact and we'll go over the final bit let's keep going all right guys here's the money shot that's everything off it just basically sits here. All right, I'm gonna need to add one more thing to this, either a little fork that holds this in place here or something like a loop that holds this to the frame because this comes out to the frame 
this comes out a bit off the frame and it, that's gonna make noise while I'm driving and that's gonna be annoying. You hit the switch. There we go, once you've hit the switch, the uh, parking brake enables. Both rear tires are locked. Now I'm just gonna need to clean this up a little bit. Everything works. We'll get the switch mounted in the dash and uh, make this a little more presentable than it is now. I mean, it does work, but I don't want this flopping around when it's in the loose state. So like this. So I don't want this thing flopping around when it's in this state. Obviously that would be annoying. So I'm gonna have to come up with something for that. All right, as you can see, I've got everything stuffed in the ashtray, nice and clean. I'm gonna have to 3D print myself another ashtray here, one that'll hold the switches. And as you can see, this switch is pretty big. So I need something about half the size of this so I can have like one, two, three, four switches in here. That way, all the stuff is hidden here. But for now, hopefully you guys can hear that. It's good to go. For now, the inside in here is done and good to go. Now let's get on to the important bits. Back here, where we left off on this truck, is the frame is grody. So I need to start getting this stuff pulled apart and getting this sanded down and cleaned up so I can get the air suspension components on. So once that's done, I'll get under here and I'll fab something up to make that a little more stable when it's in the open state. In the next video, I'm gonna start cleaning up and disassembling the frame here. We'll start sanding down the cab, et cetera, and we'll start test fitting or mocking up all of the um, air suspension stuff so we can get that on here. That way, once I've got this buttoned up, I don't have to take the thing back apart to do this again. We're gonna kind of do things in order, which is extremely unusual for me. And um, I think that's where we're gonna leave this video. All right, so I've got my little helper. She can't help with painting and things like that, but she can hang out with me when we're doing wiring or we're gonna be doing the air suspension stuff. Right, you gonna help me out with that sort of stuff? Yeah. All right, cool. So I got a partner in crime. We're going to be doing the uh, ridiculousness on this thing. So you guys stay tuned and you know how these things end. Like it if you like, don't if you don't. Subscribe to keep up with my latest shenanigans. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.